wasn't the case out in Las Vegas. The city that never sleeps, the Raiders decided to part ways with not one, but two. And Coach Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler, their general manager, things got spicy out in Sin City. And McDaniels was on the hot seat we've talked about with the Raiders for quite some time, got off to that 1-3 start. But things kind of cooled down after getting two straight wins. But the first eight weeks, the Raiders offense has been one of the worst in NFL this season. So nearly every category, you count it up, the team ranked dead last in the NFL in rushing yards per game and 29th overall in points, just under 16 per game. As for Ziegler, Mark Davis hired both of them as a pair back in January of 2022 with the hopes they could maybe turn the Raiders into the West Coast version of the Patriots. I mean, if we're talking about this year, it's, it's kind of on the same lines here. <laughs> Uh, Ziegler was, of course, an executive there for nine years out of New England before taking the job in Vegas. But one of his biggest first moves was to give Derek Carr an extension of, in April of 2022 and then cut him less than a year later. And, of course, we know now Derek Carr is in that front seat out in New Orleans. So Davis releasing his statement after that, by the way, nine hours after that deadline, saying, quote, after much thought about what the Raiders need to move forward, I have decided to part ways with Josh and Dave. I want to thank them both for their hard work and wish them and their families nothing but the best. Of course, that's coming from leadership there. Interesting to see, but when you talk about the highlights from this time between these two, or maybe low lights here, depending on how you look at it, they combined for a 9-16 record without a playoff appearance under that regime. Ziegler, of course, the shuffle from Carr to Jimmy Garoppolo. There's still some question marks there when it comes to that quarterback. Uh, with McDaniels, by the way, running the offense, the Raiders didn't hit the 20-point mark in a single game, which is the longest drought by an NFL team to start a season since 2009. All right, with more on this, Pete Prisco and Leger Duzable tapping in this morning. And Pete, I'll start with you just to see all this kind of happen right after the trade deadline. What was the final, you know, domino to get this done on the same day? Well, I think when you look at it, offensively, they're a disaster. I mean, they are awful. And what is Josh McDaniel's reputation? It's an offensive wizard. That's like getting, you know, Picasso and he gives you a paint by numbers. Or, or, you know, Michelangelo and he sculpts something I gave my mom when I was in third grade. I mean, that's basically what it is. The offense was a disaster. It was awful. And if you're supposed to be this offensive genius, the offense is supposed to work. When it doesn't work, the team loses. Everything Josh McDaniels is about starts to grate on everybody in the building. The organization, the players, everybody. Believe me, I've been around it. I've seen stuff like this. I was actually one of those guys that thought he would change the second time around. He didn't. He was still Josh McDaniels, and you can't be that way consistently and win in the NFL anymore. So I think when you look at it from that standpoint, Dave Ziegler was his buddy. They were linked together. They both had to go. I understand why Mark Davis did it. I didn't think he would do it, but I understand why he did it. Hey, Pete, what did Oprah say? When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Josh McDaniels showed us who he was in Denver. Let's put this into perspective, Pete. I believe that Josh McDaniels is the first head coach to be relieved of his duties, fired from two different organizations before completing his second season in those deals as a head coach. So that lets you know who Josh McDaniels is as a head coach. You got to look at it from another perspective. Mark Davis, right? He decides to bring in Josh McDaniels because everybody wants an offensive guru. Well, Pete, you know this. You've been following this game for a long time. As a head coach, first and foremost, what you need is a leader of man, and Josh McDaniels has not proven that he could do that. Let's go back to the 2021 season when John Gruden was uh, had to resign as the Raiders head coach. Rich Basaccia took over as head coach. They went through so much turmoil that season, the John Gruden incident with all the emails and that coming out. You look at the Henry Ruggs incident as well, right? Damon Arnett, another first-round pick. On social media with a gun, they had to release him. And through it all, Rich Basaccia held that team together. They went 10 to 7 and got into the playoffs. So I'm like you, Pete. I was surprised just because the money allotted to Josh McDaniels, he signed a six year deal. Didn't think Mark Davis would do this, but I think it, hit, it came to a head on that Monday night game versus the Detroit Lions when your star player, future Hall of Famer, Devontae Adams, is losing it on the sideline. When they asked the running back, Josh Jacobs, who led the league in rushing, Last year, how do you get the offense going? He goes, I don't know. That's not my job. I think all that came to a head, and Mark Davis didn't have a, uh, had a decision to make, and he decided to let go of Josh McDaniels.
Now, Lachey, once again, you mentioned there, this is the third time they will restart there. The interim tag going to Antonio Pierce, the linebacker coach, a former teammate of yours. Realistic expectations the rest of the way as he takes over in the head coaching spot. Well, one thing this team is going to be is they're going to be physical, right? Just knowing Antonio Pierce and his mantra. A quick story for you guys. My rookie year, I went to Giants. Antonio Pierce is a guy who won a Super Bowl with the New York Giants. Uh, he was an undrafted free agent, too. We're sitting in the hot box, right? And he was like, dudes, I see you working at practice. Just want to give you some knowledge. I've been in this game for a while. He said, what you need to do is you need to learn every position on the defensive line and then learn the linebacker position and then figure out what the secondary is doing because that's going to help you do your job. Fellas, this is one of the smartest football players I've been around. Like, he literally had to work his way up into the NFL to be a prototypical linebacker because, Pete, you know this, he didn't have the prototypical size, he didn't have the prototypical look as a linebacker, but he played at an elite level because his mental was far above everybody else. So he's going to coach a hard, tough, smart football team. That's what he's, he wants to do. And, Pete, you also know this, as a defensive-minded guy, what do defensive-minded coaches want to do? Run the football. Josh Jacobs led the league in rushing last year. This is one of the rush, worst rushing offenses in Hall of Football this year. So I know that they're going to run the football. They're going to be tough, and he wants them to be smart. He's not going to let them beat themselves. He wants to keep the games close, run the football. That way, at the end of games, they have an opportunity to win games. Well, I don't think that's going to make Devontae Adams too happy, by the way, Lige, if that's the way they're going to play. True. I mean, let's let's be real. If Devontae Adams is throwing his helmet and they're going to run the ball more, that's not going to make him uh, any happier than he was on Monday night. So, look, Antonio Pierce, is you mentioned it, he's a fiery, tough, physical guy. That's who he was as a player. That's who he was when he coached at my alma mater, Arizona State. He was an assistant coach there, assistant head coach under Herm Edwards, and he had that defense playing good, tough, physical football. Uh, he did get in a little Trouble. I mean, you know, they got in some uh, recruiting trouble. I don't know how much he was involved in that, but the word was he was. But that's a whole other story because as a Sun Devil alum, I didn't care. I was hoping they cheated themselves to a national title for <laughs> I care. Uh, you know, pay him, pay him, pay him, pay him, pay him, and win one. Just in one, do one in my lifetime. I didn't care. But as a Raiders head coach, I think people over... Um, evaluate what a head coach is. I, I think a lot of times they say, oh, you can't do it. You can't do it. He's never done it. Where's he been a head coach? If you know how to manage people and manage players and let your coaches coach, you can have success in this league. It's not that complicated. I try and tell these guys for years. You went, a lot of these guys went into the profession thinking they were going to be PE coaches making $40,000 a year. They're now NFL head coaches. It's not that complicated. Manage men, let your coaches coach, and be one of those guys that doesn't get all caught up in situational coaching because you played Madden football like some of the other guys in his division do. Yeah, Pete, I'm so glad you brought that up, right? Because the first thing you have to be is a leader of men. As players, we can tell pretty quickly if a coach is authentic or not. It doesn't, it, yes, you need to know the X's and O's, but you can hire guys on the offense and defensive side. First and foremost, you have to be a leader of men, and those guys have to believe what you're selling. So to me, being a head coach is more than just the schematics. It's about, you know, leading those 53-plus men in that locker room and also having them believe in what you're selling. I thought Pete was going to go on a tangent and saying, I want to be the next coach from Michigan. All that cheating he was just talking about. I thought, I'm glad you jumped in, Leger. I was going to ask that question, but we'll leave that for another day. But speaking of coaching and under Mark Davis, I want to take a look at it. This got, kind of goes back to 2021 or even 2011. You talk about it, Pete. The leadership here and the coaches under that, it has been bad since Hugh Jackson back in 2011. And, of course, Josh McDaniels, the latest one to fall there at 9 and 16. Look at 3 of 5, AFC West, the bottom of that. They're kind of waving the white flag this season, Pete. Where do they go from here? Well, I think you have to bring in a guy, like we just mentioned, somebody who's going to be able to lead the room and lead the coaches, but also be an X's and O's guy as well. I, look, Antonio Pierce knows football. I'm not saying he doesn't. It's just a matter of uh, he's never done this before. So where do you go? But you hire an offensive coordinator from another team. He's never done it before either. So uh, if, if Antonio Pierce can galvanize his team and get them to play well, maybe he's in the conversation at the end of the year. But there's a lot of good coaches out there. Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions, remember? 
remember, uh, he pulled his name out of uh, conversations last year because he didn't feel that comfortable with it. Well, a year later, what he's doing with that offense, he might be a name uh, that they want to take a look at. I mean, look, they've gone the offensive route a bunch of different times, though. You know, John Gruden, offensive wizard, didn't work. Uh, then they went with Josh McDaniels. Oh, he'll fix the offense. Didn't work. So maybe, maybe they'll just go to the other side of the ball and, and try and do it that way. Yeah, Pete, I'm so glad you brought that up because we were talking about this earlier. Everybody wants an offensive guru, but if you look at the list of coaches, the two coaches that had a winning record on there, Jack Del Rio, defensive-minded coach, Rich, Rich Basaccia, special teams coach. So I think Antonio Pierce, if he can turn this thing around like Rich Basaccia did, I think Mark Davis will hedge his bet, right? He understands that maybe he made a mistake and not letting Rich Basaccia be the head coach of the future because the way he was able to galvanize that team and bring them together through all the adversity they went through and be 10 and 7 to get into the playoffs, that's something that he would pray that he had right now. So I'm like you, if Antonio Pierce can turn this thing around, say they end up 500 or right outside the playoffs looking in, I think he has a legitimate shot to become the head coach of the future for the Raiders. I also like that you that you brought up a, a few other names. The Detroit Lions offensive quarter coordinator has done a really good job as well. Hasn't been a head coach uh, uh, yet to this point. But I think Antonio Pierce, if he can turn this thing around because of what Rich Passaccia did last year, I think it makes a lot of sense for Mark Davis to hedge those bets and make him the future head coach. Maybe getting to that 500 mark does help Pierce's case there when it comes to the Raiders. But once again, we're resetting the button there out in Vegas. Pete Leger, appreciate it, of course. Want to take a look at historically when it comes to the Raiders here. Look, since I mentioned the coaches in 2011, but let's not go back that far because there's been a lot of fans looking like this since 2021. And not just the shakeup with coaches and leadership as well, but of course the Gruden days, we remember that in October 20. 21 Mike Mayock of course bye bye Derek Carr in 23 and then also others and now the latest with McDaniels and Ziegler out the door the Patriots you know front office maybe thought that was going to be the West Coast version that does not look like Dr. J uh, producer Tully it yeah looks, I'm saying it, it looks more like Ice Cube it, looks like, it does look like Ice Cube who is the president of Raiders yeah I'm curious what he has to say about all this <laughs> we'll leave that conversation for another day <laughs>